Madam Speaker, I have a few questions for my uh, colleagues. What if our foreign policy of the past century is deeply flawed and has not served our national security interests? What if we wake up one day and realize that the terrorist threat is a predictable consequence of our meddling in the affairs of others and has nothing to do with us being free and prosperous? What if propping up regime, repressive regimes in the Middle East endangers both the United States and Israel? What if occupying countries like Iraq and Afghanistan and bombing Pakistan is directly related to the hatred directed toward us? What if someday it dawns on us that losing over 5,000 American military personnel in the Middle East since 9-11 is not a fair trade-off for the loss of nearly 3,000 American citizens, no matter how many Iraqi, Pakistani, and Afghan people are killed or displaced. What if we finally decide that torture, even if called enhanced interrogation technique, is self-destructive and produces no useful information, and that contracting it out to a third world nation is just as evil? What if it is finally realized that war and military spending is always destructive to the economy? What if all wartime spending is paid for through the deceitful and evil process of inflating and borrowing? What if we finally see that wartime conditions always undermine personal liberty? What if conservatives who preach small government wake up and realize that our interventionist foreign policy provides the greatest incentive to expand the government? What if conservatives understood once again that their only logical position, military intervention, and managing an empire throughout the world? What if the American people woke up and understood that the official reasons for going to war are almost always based on lies and promoted by war propaganda in order to serve special interests? What if we as a nation came to realize that the quest for empire eventually destroys all great nations? What if Obama has no intention of leaving Iraq? What if a military draft is being planned for for the wars that will spread if our foreign policy is not changed? What if the American people learn the truth? That our foreign policy has nothing to do with national security. That it never changes from one administration to the next. What if war and preparation for war is a racket serving the special interests? What if President Obama is completely wrong about Afghanistan and turns out worse than Iraq and Vietnam put together? What if Christianity actually teaches peace and not preventive wars of aggression? What if diplomacy is found to be superior to bombs and bribes in protecting America? What happens if my concerns are completely unfounded. Nothing. But what happens if my concerns are justified and ignored? Nothing good. And I yield back the balance of my time. That was uh, Ron Paul and a speech that was given back in 2009 called uh, What If? you'd like to hear it again, just look it up on YouTube. There are a number of different versions of it actually out there. Not not the actual words, but there have been some remixes done with some music thrown in the background. and uh, uh, it's Actually, some pretty provocative, thoughtful information there. John Paul is just a crazy radical. Come on. Obviously. <laughs> uh, this is, by the way, if you're just joining us, this is Patriot's Lament, uh, a Saturday show here at 10 a.m. every Saturday. The point being to talk about liberty, to educate ourselves about what it means to go back to our original founding documents and to think, you know, look, if our freedom is based on what man says, then really our freedom is worth nothing. But if it, our freedom comes from a higher power, then no matter what man says, they cannot keep us chained up. And uh, joining us in the studio, of course, we've got Aaron Bennett from Far North Tactical. We also have Dave Giesel from the... Uh, Fairbanks chapter of the Campaign for Liberty. And you guys are having a book meeting, right? You're coming up here. Are you going to be discussing the politics of obedience this week? Yep, this Wednesday. And so if anybody wants all the information on that, just go to Fairbanks Campaign for Liberty. Uh, I was going to say .com, but it's actually a meetup site. Just Google Fairbanks Campaign for Liberty, and you'll find it. It'll be the top hit. And also we have a um, a rather big event 
Ron Paul event that we're planning for July 23rd. And uh, it's still kind of top secret now that I've said it on the radio. So if anybody's interested in that, also go to the uh, Fairbanks uh, Campaign for Liberty meetup site and uh, sign up there, and we'll be posting all the information on that as it comes together. All right, beautiful. Also in the studio with us is uh, Josh Bennett from uh, Bighorn Enterprises. And uh, we invite your participation through uh, the, the phones and through the email. All four lines are on hold, but we do not have to go back to the phones right now. What do you we guys want to I just want to say we have a website, too, that the three of us kind of piddle paddle with. Uh, it's uh, patriotslament.blogspot.com. Welcome to come on there and send us some hate mail or replies to what we've written on there. It'd be fun. And there's another Patriots Lament website, but if you throw the blog spot in there, then you'll get ours. All right. The other one's just your normal riffraff about Iraq War, the uh, Obama, right, left, left, right. Yeah, that's the neocon uh, site. Ours yeah. is the real one. Yeah. So it, it really doesn't matter who's in in office, really, whether it's Obama or Bush the third or whatever else. The, the bottom line is is that uh, liberty. Dot org or dot com. Blog, the uh, the our, your website is patriotslament.blogspot.com. Yep, we've got it pulled up right here. Ready to go back to the phones? Have you been going to the wrong website all this time? Yeah, I've been hanging out. <laughs> I've been hanging out with the new accounts, me and Randy. <laughs> okay. Four five eight. Talk the number. Good morning, caller. Thanks for your patience. Who's this? Hey, this is Roger. Hey, Roger. What's on your mind? Well, I was I was just um wanted to respond to that first caller, um and uh you know I I have been a not physically abused, but abused by the police many times in Little Rock, Arkansas. And I, I don't think they're the same here. I haven't had any sort of, you know, I haven't had any bad experiences here. But um, some places, they do run over you. They do abuse their power daily. And if you have anything to say about it, they will arrest you. And they will, <laughs> they will tell you, shut up, I'm the police, you, you don't talk, I do the talking. You know, there's, uh, you, you can't hardly just say, uh, oh, these, these police probably had a good reason to do this, you know, and I can't imagine that there was a good reason to, uh, do what they did against that, uh, mentally handicapped person. And, uh, also, when he uh when he said they're just doing their job what if what if their job is wrong? you know it's not like you could walk down the streets without a piece of paper in your pocket that says what your name is and all uh, you know what what are you doing here? what's your name you know what if it's none of their business you know <laughs> it's it, from one man to another I don't think that there's any any man out there that really has the authority, the authority from me to just come up and say, uh, show me your papers or I'll throw you in jail. Because that's basically what it comes down to. And uh, Why do you think that you cannot walk around the streets without your paperwork? If we ask you for your paperwork, you show us your paperwork. You do not have your papers. You must, not you, be, you must be hiding something. You have yeah. something to hide? <laughs> it's, it's too late at night. <laughs> what are you doing on the streets so late at night? <laughs> what? Do you have a weapon on you? <laughs> no, you are obviously a poor decision maker. Yeah. And uh, isn't it my right to be a poor decision maker anyway? I, I mean, I can, you know. It, it, the problem is, is that on, you've lost all of your rights, and they've all become privileges that can be revoked at any time. That's our whole point from the beginning. If you can have it taken away, it's not a right. It's a privilege. It's being granted to you. Yeah, and uh, also I wanted to ask him, why does he have so much sympathy for the police anyway? It's not, I mean, they have every every resource at their, at their disposal. I mean, down there, they have crooked judges. <laughs> they, I don't know about the judges up here. I haven't had any experience with them. But, uh... Down there, if you if a cop says you did something, you did it. Oh, that's uh, you better not fuck them either, because you'll be thrown in jail for longer. 
Yeah, I think that's the same just about anywhere. I've been told that in court here that um, when the guy was lying flat out, and I told ah judge, I said, well, he's lying. I mean, I had proof. I had pictures. I showed it all. And he said, well, the court's discretion to believe the officer over a citizen. So that yeah. was a DOT officer, though, which I have great admiration for daily. I think about him all the time because I love him so much. We're not, You know, I have sympathy for police officers, too. They, I think all or most of them, at least that I've met, got the job for the right reasons. And, uh, you know, they put their life on the line. And at times, there's times would darn good that they were there. Um, the problem is the people that employ them and the leash that they put on them and the mandates that they tell them, you will do this and you will do that, and they end up spending time doing things that they shouldn't have to be doing. Yeah, I mean, I have a lot of respect for them, but uh, when, when their job is to pull you over and uh, impound your car because you don't have insurance or you don't have a driver's license, then uh, some, something's wrong there. But uh, I'll get off here and let, right. let the next Thanks for the call, call, brother. Appreciate it. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. This is Patriot's Lament. Who's this? This is Randy. Randy, thanks for calling in. What's on your mind today? Howdy, Randy. Hi there. Well, as far as the police, uh, I'm sure there's instances where they overstep their boundaries, but the main thing that I'm happy about is that most of them here in this country are locally controlled, and it would really be bad if they became federales or of the Gestapo type of structure where then you really can watch your rights go away. But what I wanted to ask about is is something I still have kind of a question about, about the position that you fellows there have. Uh, much of what you say I certainly agree with. Uh, I don't like a lot of the laws and regulations that come out of government. And I agree with all that. But what I'm still a little puzzled about is the the form of the structure of government that you do support. And let me just say that I, from listening to uh, your shows and re-listening to the recordings I have of the shows, I have determined that you all believe in juries and you believe in the uh, people that are informed about juries' rights to judge the law as well as the facts, and you believe in courts. Uh, last Saturday I was talking to Dave Giesel there on the radio and uh, asking him about the same question, and, and, and Dave, you mentioned that uh, you don't think that the, represent- that the representatives we elect automatically represent everyone because so many people have different views and everything. And you also said that the private market is a better determiner of uh, what we need than government edicts, which I agree with. But uh, and, and in past uh, broadcasts, you talked about how Israel had the judges and they didn't have kings. And so, and then last Monday I asked Aaron these questions, and uh, I asked, well, do you agree with the structure, the governor, the senators and representatives they have in Juneau or not? And then Aaron said, absolutely. And then I thought that answered the question, but after I hung up, I thought, well, absolutely to our or not <laughs> so can you please spend a, a few a minute or so saying on the federal level and on the state level what kind of structure meaning senators governors kings uh, divinely appointed judges what kind of structure of government should we have in this country